So we've seen a lot of ear rots and ear molds this season. Most of them are starting, they seem to be surfacing about now, last week. Uh, it's a pretty common problem where we have the season that we've had this summer with a lot of wet weather and that wet weather even coming through into the fall and also cool weather. So what happens is the the fungi actually infects the corn fairly early on before it's even mature. So it's usually there, but won't actually sporulate into what we see on the ears of corn, which are sort of these black fungi sort of masses. And we also see some pink colors, etc. unless the conditions are right. And the conditions have been right this fall. So there's several different types of fungi that affect the, the ears of corn. Some of them produce vomitoxins or mycotoxins that can hurt the cows, and many of them do not. They're just mostly surface molds or fungi that, that are just there because the conditions are right and they won't hurt the cows at all. So the one that we really have to look out for is called gibberella and also fusarium, and those are the two that, produce, um, that can produce mycotoxins. And if you see those, you definitely need to get the corn tested um, and you can send it in to a number of labs and they'll, they'll tell you it, what the uh, vomitoxin levels are of the corn. The vomitoxin producing fungi often are pink in color and also sort of whitish, whitish pink. And it can be a little hard to identify, especially if the pink is not showing up. And um, we do have some, a little bit of pink on these ears, not much, but you can see right here there's some there's some pink on the ear as well as some of the white. And uh, so this particular ear here might have some vomitoxins. One of the other really common fungi that we see um, in, under these wet conditions is penicillium. Penicillium, actually, I, I don't believe this is penicillium. Uh, penicillium is usually sort of a greenish gray color, and it grows in between the, the rows of, of kernels. So you can identify it that way, and, and none of this uh, fungi on here is in between the rows. This is all surface on top of the corn kernels. There is a, a, a few other types. There's one called diploidea, which we've seen a lot of this year. I don't see any in this field, but diploidea would be white, a white mold that generally starts from the bottom of the ear and works its way up. It does not produce vomitoxins, um, but it will reduce the test weight of the corn. Lastly, there's one called cladiosporum, and that's a black surface fungi. Um, we generally see that when, especially when the corn's been damaged by frost. Um, hail, insects, things like that, but I would say frost is probably our, our best guess this year. And that's a, a black fungi that's more surface, and I think that we may have quite a bit of that out here in this field, potentially mixed with fusarium or gibberella, um, which also produces vomitoxins. Now gibberella is, is similar to the fusarium, they're actually related, and the gibberella generally starts from the top of the ear, and moves its way down. Um, and it will also be a whitish pink fungi. And again, we do have some white fungi on this particular ear. And so it's a little hard to tell exactly what it is. So we're gonna bring it to the plant diagnostic lab and have it tested. If you're selling the corn uh, to a gran grain elevator, then they'll be testing the corn as you bring it in um, to see what the levels are, to see if it's present. and. Uh, you'll be most likely docked uh, at that time for the quality of the grain this year.